Welcome back to another video everyone, this is Diego from the Art Track, and today we are going to cover wet media options. We have watercolor palettes, and for this we are going to need a little bit of water, a paintbrush, a napkin, and some watercolor paper. I'm also going to be looking at some India ink, and some Blick liquid watercolor. So the basic rules for these palette watercolors are that Water will activate the dried pigment. This casing here, this clear plastic casing, can be used as a palette. I was 33 years old when I found this out, but these things have a divider on them. They're all divided into little sections, and that's what this is for, it's so you guys can use as a palette. So when you're painting with watercolor, the amount of water mixed with your pigment will determine how light your color is. The more water there is, the lighter it becomes. In case you added too much water, you can move the water around, add some more pigment to it, or you can let it dry and then apply additional pigment over it. Alright, so let's experiment with some water here. I'm going to add a bunch of water to this paper. It is watercolor paper, so like, it'll be able to handle it. I'm gonna just twirl some water around. I'm gonna bring this India ink in, and you're gonna notice that the pigments in India ink and in watercolor have to flow in the water. They can't escape it. Okay, a lot of the time when you add pigment or drops of India ink directly to the paper, it's just gonna stay there. However, if there's water on the paper, it will flow with the water. It's almost like mixing your Kool-Aid. Um, whenever you get the, the pigment, the, the drink mix into the water, the drink mix starts to spread out. The pigment spreads through the gallon and the water turns it's a, it's a cherry flavor. It turns from a pink to a red and then you mix it all up. It's the same idea with watercolor and ink inks and water. When you activate a palette of color, you don't have to add water to the whole thing. You can just add it to a little spot, especially if your paintbrush is smaller. On the smaller side, you can just add it to a small spot. You don't have to activate it all. It just makes a bigger mess when you do it. And now I'm gonna start bringing in some water. Dipping the brush. Never, never do what I did and dip the whole brush. It's bad for the brush. Yeah. Just dip the bristles. And there you go. From a nice light green to a almost white background. Mixing watercolors is pretty easy. Especially when they're still wet. You can apply the second color directly on top of it, or you can use your palette to mix the colors. For me, I just enjoy painting directly on the paper, mixing on the paper. But if you want to have a real precise blend, mix a bunch of these colors up in the color palette. And for right now, I'm just going up and down, back and forth, trying to get these colors to blend. All right, how to clean your brush properly. You're gonna wet the bristles only. Don't dip the whole thing like I did previously. That's a bad habit to have. Now I'm gonna pretend I'm painting the napkin with my brush. I'm gonna continue dipping it in the water over and over again until I get a light brush stroke. Okay, that's pretty good. Now when you're drying it, I like to pancake it. I mean, I like to press it in between the two sides of the napkin. I don't want to pull on my brush because that would rip the bristles apart. So just be gentle when you're pressing down. And there you go. Okay, let's talk about paper weight. We have copy paper, we have 70 pound drawing paper, and 140 pound watercolor paper. All this means is the thickness of it. And this one has a bit of a tooth to it, some texture, and that really holds onto the water or any type of liquid to it. 
we're gonna see which one of these is best for these wet medias. We have copy paper, here's some India ink. Copy paper being the thinnest one of these and watercolor paper being the thickest one. And you can see how they each take the India ink. One stroke a piece. And there you go. You can see that on the watercolor paper we can see through it, but on both the copy paper and drawing paper, the India ink was visible from the back side. All right, let's add some watercolor to this copy paper. Same blue square on the drawing paper and on the watercolor paper. Let's make a mess of things. Let's add a whole bunch of water to these. And you can already see the difference. Now my table is kind of slanted, so you're gonna see the water drip down. But look at the big difference. Look at the copy paper and how the water seems to be dragging down. And look at the watercolor paper, which seems to be holding its shape. All right, let's throw some more water, connect them. And you're gonna see that the watercolor paper, because it has that tooth, it tends to hold the shape of the water, how we leave it on there until we move it. And here are the papers after a few minutes of drying. You're gonna see that the copy paper is not really holding up to it. It kind of wrinkles and you can see through it. The drawn paper is holding up okay, but it's still kind of wet. The drawing paper has some drying to do because it hasn't absorbed the water and you can see that the watercolor paper is almost completely dry. This drip was because I actually accidentally bumped the table otherwise it would have held its shape. All right let's take this watercolor paper and do one more experiment. What happens when we add these pigments to wet paper versus dry paper? What do we get? What's the difference? We're going to use the liquid watercolor since it's already in a liquid form and we're just going to drop it onto the dry paper. And because the liquid watercolor is thicker, it's a thick uh, liquid, it doesn't really flow much on the dry paper. Let me go ahead and make a mess with the water here and let's apply the black watercolor and you're going to see it spread out on the wet areas. Whereas on the dry paper, the watercolor just seems to keep its shape. Let me add some more water, and now it's dripping everywhere. Let me clean that up a little bit. Dry paper, wet paper. See the difference? The pigments will only flow on the wet side. 